Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a MIDI step sequencer for synths in Reaper. Now, the purpose of a MIDI sequencer for our synths is it'll allow us to trigger those synths without a MIDI keyboard and also play things that are hard to play usually based on rhythmic patterns. So let's take a look. So the project in front of me here, and right down over here, we have a synth. It sounds like this. And if we check out the effects, I have a synth on there, an EQ, a delay, and a reverb. But I don't want to play this part with my keyboard. I want to trigger it using a sequencer or a sequencer plugin. And luckily in Reaper, we have one, or a few. So let's take a look. Let's double click over here. Let's type in the filter MIDI. And then right down over here, we have a few plugins that'll do it. There's a Sequence of Baby, Sequence of Baby version two, and the one we're gonna use here called Mega Baby, which has more features than these two, although the other ones still work well. So if you want a simplified version, check those out. But in this video, we're going to check out this one, the MIDI sequencer, Mega Baby. And it looks like this. But before we open it up, we have to make sure we put it before our synth. Because it's a MIDI plugin. It doesn't work with audio. So it has to go before our synth. So now let's open it up as big as possible. And it looks like this. Let's start with this keyboard up here. If we notice in green, that's what we're seeing over here. Here are the keys. We can move it around to find the section of keys we want to work with. Let's go a bit higher, right about there. Let's move these red ones up higher to about this octave. These keys over here in red are going to trigger different patterns, which I'll show you in a bit. But those can be moved around right here to different keys. But the green keys is what we're seeing. We can make it more narrow by right click dragging to make it smaller or bigger. But this just adjusts what we see. Let's move it down here so we can see it a little better. There we go. So all we have to do to trigger the synth is place some notes in here. We can audition notes by right clicking on any box. And to place notes, just click them. And now it'll sound like this. Or we could just drag them in a straight line, like this, to erase them or to draw them. Now let's take a look up here. The first option is to choose the pattern. We could choose zero through 15, so the 16 options, but we could also choose those right over here, zero through 15. And those are changing the patterns that we create down here. But let's just start with the one. Next, we could choose the length of the pattern. It defaults to 16. So we're seeing 16 boxes to choose from. So by default, we're hearing 16th notes. But we could change that by making it shorter or making it longer to change how many boxes we see. We could change the rate, which is how fast it's going to play. It's going to default to 16th notes. But if we change it here to be half, it'll be eighth notes. Or we could double it to be 32nd notes. Let's put it back to the default, which is 16th notes. And we could also create steps per beat. By default, it's four, which is why we're hearing 16th notes. But again, we can change it to be eight for 32nd notes, or two to be eighth notes, or anything in between. Now, by default, the length of each note is full. 
So there's no gap between the notes. If we want to make the note shorter, we could do that right here, just by grabbing it and making it shorter. We could change the swing right here. Now let's create a more interesting sequence. Let's delete this, start it again, make it random. Now if we want to change the velocity of each note, on the PC, hold on Control, or the Mac, hold on Command, and just drag it, and that changes the velocity of each note. And the last note we choose decides what's going to happen on future notes. So if I bring this all the way up, let's delete all these, add more notes, each one of them is full up. Or let's bring this one down a bunch, and everything I create after this is going to be that velocity. So it's the last one we create. And we could also adjust the velocity by creating a curve. Hold on the same modifier and just draw to create a curve for the velocity, starting lower and going higher, going back down. Or we could bring them all up or down together. On the PC, hold on Alt Control. On the Mac, hold on Option Command. We could adjust the velocity on one note altogether, like this. Bring it all the way up or all the way down. So you could readjust the velocity on all notes on that one lane. We could delete this pattern by going to the number, hold on Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, and just right clicking it, and that clears it. Let's create another one. Start with these two, do some random ones here. Let's say we liked this pattern. We want to expand it and make it longer. We can go over here to the left, hold down Shift, and then click it, and it doubles the pattern and copies both halves to be the same. Making it a lot easier to change some notes on the second half, creating a longer pattern. Maybe get rid of this one and choose this note instead. So you can create longer patterns out of shorter ones. Let's put this back to a shorter pattern, double clicking this one, go back to the original one, and instead let's create another pattern based on this one. So we can go up to number one, on the PC hit control, on the Mac hit command and click it, and it duplicates that pattern to the second one. So they're both the same. Now we can change the second one over here. Maybe change this note down to here. But we still have the first pattern over here. So we can go back and forth using our keyboard right here. So if I play my keyboard up here, with MIDI trigger changed to pattern change, if I hit the key over here, it changes back to zero. Hit the C sharp right here, changes to the second pattern. Let's make a third one, 
by again duplicating it to here. Let's change this one to be a bit different. Let's change this. So this note is over here. So now we have three patterns to choose from. And we can switch them with our keyboard down here. Our first one, our second one, and the third one. And we can keep going. But let's do it live. And what's nice about it, you don't have to wait till it repeats. You can switch at any point if you want. Now besides switching just the patterns, we can also switch the notes. So if we change this to pattern change, transpose, let's go back to the first one. Let's make all the notes the same, just to make it easier, and do the same with the second one. Let's take the third one and make it all 16th notes. Let's readjust the second one just a bit, change the rhythm like that. Now with this chosen up here, pattern change, transpose, we can change the pattern up here, but we can change the notes or transpose them down over here. Watch. And now I'll play different notes. Just by hitting different notes, I'm actually transposing the part. And we could also choose to resync. So now over here with these keys, the red ones, not only can we change the pattern, but we could also change the timing. So to restart every time we hit the key. which is really useful for live performance. You can restart based on where the band is playing and resync while we're changing the pattern. Now we can also tie some of these notes together so they're not all playing 16th notes. Let's go to the pattern with all the 16th notes. Let's say we want to make this a bit longer. If we hold on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, we can just drag from here and make it a whole note. Or an eighth note. We could undo it with the same modifier. Let's do the same with this. We could put them back with that same modifier. Just drag it to put them back to separate notes. We could also subdivide them with a modifier. If we hold down shift and right drag over here, we can create more notes within that note. Let's make it a 30 second note like this. Let's do one here as well. 
and it'll sound like this. We can put them back the same way. Hold on shift and right drag, more or less. Now, if you want to know all the modifiers that work with this plugin, just go over here to edit, and we can see them all right over here. There's a whole bunch of them that are really useful. I just showed you the main ones. So anyway, that's creating a MIDI step sequencer in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh.